Hey guys, welcome to the Kerbal Space Centre testing program where we are going to test the landing mechanisms of this brand new spaceship. Uh, so we're going to go up and just immediately start turning over because we're after some forward velocity here, right? Uh, so what we've got here is what I am rather handily calling damp ashes. It is my uh, Phoenix homage, hence damp ashes, you know, it's not quite as good as Phoenix. Uh, but I have literally got just about everything sorted on it. It weighs about the same, it's got about the same level of science, if not doing exactly the same um, type of science. Um, it's also the right size and the right shape if I put these uh, side panels out. Um, the problem is we don't have the round um, solar panels and I can't, I can't show you what they look like right now because you know that would rip them off at this point in time with this amount of acceleration on the go. Uh, let's, let's get this open. I was really hoping we'd be done by now. Let's Right, we're going to drop that and we're going to face ourselves around like this. Now I had awful trouble trying to get this thing um, properly balanced. Uh, and to be honest, it's still not balanced. This this um, arm here, uh, this, this, it's, it's not, it's terribly unbalanced. It's, it's really the only way I can say. Um, I've got so much of robotic stuff in here that I literally could not put enough stuff on it to um, to balance it all out. So anyway, we're trying to simulate some sort of Martian landing here. Now the problem with this is obviously the atmosphere is a lot thicker here, like a lot thicker here. Um, and that's not really what we want to do. I, I really meant to replace this parachute with a drogue chute and try and use that to simulate the atmosphere. Um, but anyway, this thing should be light enough that we can actually get it down um, almost solely on parachutes. Um, if that fails, I do have lots of little thrusters underneath here, um, which should hopefully allow us to have a, a nice rocket assisted landing. Uh, so we're looking at the surface altitude here, we're, we're about four kilometers or so. I don't really want to um, pop this parachute too early because, well, as always, descent is the worst bit of this game um, or at least I think so anyway uh, we're gonna wait till we're down to at least uh, one one kilometer underneath and then we're gonna pop the parachutes I've, I've got all the staging set up nicely uh, hopefully um, so yeah if we get down to, to one kilometer uh, 800 f about 500 meters there we go and then we just float down now what speed are we coming down at we're coming down at eight meters per second now that's not great that's fast even for Kerbal, uh, Kerbin. Um, so yeah, obviously we're gonna have to fire up those things. Wow, I don't know if uh, I turned that down on your guys a bit, but that was loud here. And we're gonna have to wait for the, the, the floor to come up. Now the problem with the floor is I never know how close the floor is. Um, especially when we're at so, so late in the day, sun's going down. Like we're gonna be up at the Martian poles when we're landing this thing. so. We're, could probably expect to have the similar sort of lighting levels uh, now it looks to me like the floor is coming up so if we just kind of ease some throttle in here uh, there are six boosters and uh, not boosters six engine nozzles underneath here so we should be able to hopefully just kind of ease ourselves down as much as we need to uh, half throttle is kind of easing me down to m underneath three meters per second and there we go perfect and we've barely used any fuel now hopefully on Mars we can actually, uh, on Mars, on Juno, sorry, we can actually use those rockets um, a bit more powerfully because, um, so the atmosphere there only gives 20% of the drag or something like that, which means that we're gonna have to be giving mm, more throttle, mm, about 80% about more throttle. And if we're using half, I'm not sure if that's gonna be enough. Only really one way to find out. Oh, and what I didn't do was pop this parachute at the last second. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's useful. Oh, that that could even stay. That could stay. Right, uh, a quick check of the uh, of the systems. Let's try and lo lift this arm up. Oh, look at that, perfect. Uh, so I'm using some of the um, infernal robotics here, as you may or may not be able to tell, to basically just try and um, try and replicate the arm. Now, this this arm isn't going to be doing any actual science. Um, I couldn't find anything that would actually be worth sticking on the end of the arm. Um, but it does reach all the way down to the floor uh, when when it has been prepared properly. Donk! There we go. 
Alright, I think that's good. We're going to recover this, and then we're going to launch it up into orbit, because that was all I really wanted to do. And we're going to stick this next to the DRO, and we're going to send them both in, like, 11 days, which I'm just going to kind of whip through by time acceleration, I think. Oh, look, we've got some science. Uh, didn't earn any... Nor, uh, any decent science, but we got some science. Oh, which means that over here, I can open this up, and if we've got Dan Pashes just here, and we launch that, and I present to you Bubba, my um, medium to heavy lifting platform. Uh, he, he doesn't... Oh, hello. Where's the sun coming from? Look, we, we got some sun coming in on us, but... I. I don't know where his coat must come underneath the models or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, so this is, uh, as I say, Bubba, my, my medium to heavy... Oh, I can't get rid of that. Uh, my medium to heavy lifting platform. We're, gonna, we're just going to take off. Oh, I haven't got any landing clamps here. There we go, look. Going to have to move these down. Wasting fuel. We might actually revert this flight. But I, I think that should do. Hopefully, if all goes wrong, we can revert the flight. But I, th I think that's all right. We should be able to uh, to push ourselves up. Um, so yeah, what do we have here? Um, we have a whole load of solid boosters. You may have seen this setup before that I've done. I have the small boosters on the outside of the large boosters. Obviously, the, the small ones being dropping dropped first. Um, inside, we have a ring of orange tubes. Uh, they have skippers underneath because they have a higher ISP despite being able to not produce as much thrust. And then in the middle we have a mainsail. Because while, while that lacks in efficiency, it sure as hell makes up for it in grunt. Okay, so we're trying to keep our throttle down quite low at the moment because, well, honestly we don't want to be pushing our way uh, too far through atmospheric drag because this means that we're trading off fuel for pushing through the atmosphere. Uh, that that's rubbish. That that means that we got absolutely no um, no progress being made. We're just throwing fuel with yeah with no efficiency savings. Okay, so stagings are going well. Uh, I'm trying to keep us uh, accelerating because I, I just I don't like decelerating. Even though that uh, like I just said, it's pushing against the atmosphere and stuff like that. I just like to be able to keep going quicker and quicker. Now the um, mistake we made with the clamps is actually costing us um, quite a bit of fuel. I was expecting to um, be well past this this gravity turn here before I drop my first stage, but that's all right. I mean. This is my like heavy lifter and this Phoenix type craft on here is not um, a heavy probe by any stretch of the imagination. I, I didn't actually get what its weight was, um, but I'm sure we can we can sort that out. Okay, so main thing we're trying to do here is not overcook our orbit because with such a powerful, powerful engine like this, it's very easy to um, push our Apple apps up a lot higher than we intend it to go. Um, I, I know this because I've done it a couple of times um, in other test worlds and stuff. I've made a ridiculous, uh, ridiculous lifter with a tiny little probe on top of it, and we've, uh, I've just ended up pushing my Apple apps outside of the sphere of influence before I've even really um, cleared the atmosphere, um, which sounds good, but it, it's really not. I mean, when we want to do our transfer burn from Kerbin to Juno, we want to be as low down as possible so that we can uh, take full effect of the Erglerth effect. Uh, that, of course, being that wonderful mathematical principle that because you're traveling fast and your um, like velocity is a product of both your forward velocity and your exhaust uh, backwardsness, if you're traveling fast, that means everything's traveling fast and you get an extra plus um, just just out of being traveling fast, which is nice. Okay, so we're about ready to um, lean over all the way to the horizon. Uh, I might inconvenient that I'm running off electrical power at this point, actually. Because um, whilst I've got all my engines firing, we're, we're all good. But at some point, I'm going to want to turn my engines off, especially if my Apple apps ends up going anywhere near the 100 uh, kilometer mark. Um, which could very well put me in a situation where I have to make a circularization burn in the dark side, on the dark side of the orbit. Uh, and that would be, as I say, a might inconvenient because already it's getting rather difficult to see what's going on here. Um, especially if I stare into the sun like this. Ah. Um, but yeah, so heading towards this little galactic light strip here. 
and as expected, our Apple apps is getting up amazingly high. We're doing all right for fuel. We've got enough electric charge. Um, I'm just going to nose down a little bit and ease it on again. Um, actually, that's not going to do me any good at all. Uh, so we're going to have to just wait until we get up to this point here when we need to make a circularization orbit and do our best not to crash into anything. Um, now, as, as expected, right on the dark side of the planet, but that's all right. We'll, we'll sort that out. I've got that marker put down there. So all we need to do is try and swing our ponderous way over that way. Like so. Wow, this is a heavy inertia-driven craft. Okay, awesome. Now we're going to enjoy the beautiful music and time warp our way up to the next maneuver node that needs doing, which is within a couple of minutes. And as it's only a couple of seconds burn, we'll, take, we'll cut it nice and close. About there. That looks good. And we'll just kind of throttle our fuel up. Um, we should really keep an eye on the orbital map um, just to make sure we're not overcooking it as I say that that would be the one of the worst outcomes that we could possibly get from this it wouldn't be completely irrevocable we, we could definitely fix anything like that um, right so boom perfect now we just need to wait round well I think we're there actually I think we're in a nice stable orbit 96 90 yeah that's near enough perfect so all we need to do now is uh kill some time let's have a look at at this let's hide this down under here so we've got 11 days and two hours to kill i think we can do that watching some satellites and doing some mapping of kerbin you don't need to do that though what we're going to do is uh jump cut until this becomes a much smaller number possibly um less than a day left to do and i'm going to map Kerbin with the uh, satellite we put up last episode. Woo! Okay, so I'm less than oh, where, where's my where's my alarm clock? I'm less than a day into um, scanning the, the the planet, and I realised that the orbit that I've got this set up into just keeps putting me down these same tracks. Now, whilst if I switch onto the map, this does show me lovely selection of anomalies that we can come back to later. It does mean that I'm missing a lot of just data about what the place looks like. So what I'm thinking of doing is bringing my inclination, um, I can show you better from this map, bring my inclination down um, so it's more of a diagonal like this. Um, yeah, I think that's exactly what we're going to do. So as we're coming back up our orbit here, we're going to add a maneuver and we're going to attempt to put ourselves on a diagonal without pushing our orbit up too much. Uh, this takes a bit of fine control. Uh, about 211 should do. Uh, how far over do we want? I mean, I'd, ideally I'd like to get to a 45 degree, but that's going to take quite a lot of energy. Um, and we are just using an ion drive which should be all right but at the same time we really don't want to uh commit ourselves to too much of a maneuver with the ion drive because well like maneuvers with the ion drives takes forever uh right so let's try and find this little marker over here without hopefully upsetting my uh my solar panels too much because you know too much acceleration will snap them off we, we, we've seen this before and now we've got a half hour burn to make well I will see you when that's done um, maybe I've been burning for a couple of minutes now or ionizing for a couple of minutes now enough time for me to come up from the south pole to this pla to the uh, the burn to the maneuver node now as you can see this purple one is my projected orbit is what I was kind of aiming for with my maneuver node and as you can see I've not really managed to get that this blue one is my is my orbit on this side of the planet my first orbit and then the the yellow one or orange i suppose is going to be my my second orbit um yeah as you can see they're quite a distance away so what i'm going to do is actually just pull this top bit of my orbit down to so it's covering these bits where where the gap is you see i've got this solid block of uh, of scanned data here i'm going to try and move this up incrementally and move this top one down incrementally until we're scanning this uh scanning the planet a little bit at a time uh yeah i just thought i'd update you with what i was doing because it was different from what the plan originally was hey 
All right, enough is enough. Let me just run through some quick maths with you. Uh, so at the height that the satellite was flying at, we could only go a uh, hundred times acceleration. Now, as we had say 10 days um, to burn through, at times 10 speed, that would be a day. At a hundred times speed, that's a 10th of a day. That's only two, that's two and a half hours. I do not have two and a half hours to sit and watch that satellite. So at this point, I don't know, maybe half hour? No, no. I may, I may have even already spent an hour doing this, just kind of reorientating my burns and stuff like that. So we're now going to just kind of speed up our time here with a slightly more accelerated uh, format. I'm just going to um, give myself a little bit more time here just in case. Oh, ooh, my number lock's not on. Uh, we want three hours right here. Oh, Juna, da 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 da. We're not there already, are we? Close. Turn this down. What have I done here? Okay, so I've been playing around with the alarm clock and I'm, I'm really not sure what's happened here, but I've changed the alarm and it's gone back to six days. So we're just going to accept that it, it, it is now right and really hope that I've not completely upset anything, um, well, important, I suppose. Okay, so if we hit, uh, see, like, like this. This, this shouldn't this shouldn't be here like this we're going to delete it uh, so we've got the six day alarm that that's that's what I really was looking for um, so we're gonna fast forward our way through these six days um, and this is going to be quite a long process even at like hundreds of thousands of speeds uh, we've got five days four days um, I would click up another thing but I, I don't think that's really the way to go about it um, so less than a day to go we're going to come out here we're going to get into our tracking station now we need to go and sort out our individual ships uh, so let's start with the dro because he's the important one well you know they're both important but the dro is the one laying the groundwork for all the other vessels well it took a lot of mucking about but there is the DRO's uh, orbital transfer. It's quite a nice little arc there. I'm going to set up the uh, the manoeuvre nude. We'll add the alarm for that. Uh, 20 minutes. So that gives us 20 minutes to go set up the damp ashes manoeuvre node, which is also just as good. So we need to add this to the alarm as well. Oh, they both at the same time. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to set offset this by a single orbit, hopefully. If we can come in and do this, click that forwards one, that's how it works, right? Yeah, so that's an hour's time now, so if we come out and just make sure that's still, yeah, that's still making the correct place. So we'll put that in there. I, I have now, however, uh, lost the other manoeuvre node, but there we go. They're both set up, I'm going to go do them and possibly just show you the quick quick uh, segments of their burnings. So we are time warping our way through. We are four minutes away from our next alarm. Um, hopefully we should be able to get there soon enough um, and hopefully not overshoot. Um, so I could go and uh, look it up in the, uh, what's this thing called, tracking station, but we're just gonna do this. That's the good thing about the uh, Kerbal alarm clock. It does just give you this nice little like click, um, click to go back to the ship. I am currently on the wrong side of the planet with no power though. Oh, that's alright, I've got, I've got power. Oof. Sorry, I saw, I saw that and I was like, oh no. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is locate the maneuver burn, uh, the maneuver node. Maneuver burn? Well, I suppose it is a burn, but... Um, right, and thankfully, like, for the first time ever, we appear to be going in the correct direction. Look at that, brilliant. So we have 24 seconds to make, to start making it half of this burn, oh wow. We might be a little bit off, but we're just going to slam our mainsail on as, as hard as possible and we'll see what happens, right? Um, so we're burning pretty well. Um, this is quite a boring view. We can see the bit up mun over there, but yeah, that, that's quite boring. Let's just uh, open up this one and that'll be a, a, a lot better. We can definitely see what's going on a bit, a bit clearer here. Oh, what's this? That's, I hope that's not the manoeuvre that I'm lined up for. But anyway, let's take this away because we're just pointed in the right direction. Let's see what's happening with our burn to make sure that it is indeed going correctly. Oh, something very bad has happened somewhere along the line here. We'll, we'll carry on and see what happens. But I don't think this was the burn I was expecting to make. No, this definitely is not the burn I was expecting to make. 
Is that still going up? It's not going up. Why is... Something appears to be very wrong here and I'm not entirely sure what it is. Let's 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 go in and have a look, see what's... Is this a manoeuvre burn as well? Oh, I've managed to turn two manoeuvre burn. Okay, right. Sorry, I confused myself there with multiple manoeuvre burns. I'm not sure how they even got set up, but there we go. Right, so we're going to uh, continue raising our apparatus here. Uh, we've got an hour to, to make this burn work. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, which is more than enough time, really. Um, as long as we can make sure this comes in at the right altitude. Don't, ah, we went too far. So that's easy to, uh, to rectify. Um, I wish I did put more reaction um, wheels on this though. That, that would have been very useful. Uh, okay, so uh, a trick for making this go quicker is like do a physics warp faster. When did I prep? Ah, oh, I've got my SAS on. Uh, and by speeding that up, we can actually turn our ship round a lot faster. Hopefully not so fast that we like snap bits off. Oh, and I'm about to run out of my electric charge, which would be a mite inconvenient, but we're getting there, so we don't really need it. Yeah, so let's just ease this back this way at our lowest possible throttle, and just until this closest approach comes a bit more, uh, something like that, periapsis of... Uh, 32,000 meters, can we get any closer? I mean, we want to get as close as we can, really. Um, there, let's just start going back up. So that's obviously our closest approach for that one. That's brilliant, let's just watch this, uh, let's watch Kerbin disappear. Um, we have an hour to wait, which should be enough to get us launched outside of the sphere of influence. Now, I've said what, let's watch Kerbin disappear, but of course, we are just watching the night side here, which is a little bit... Not exactly on the most interesting front, but let's uh, speed up and we might get a bit further. Okay, jump ship and restore maneuver nodes. Okay, let's close this. Right, first things first, let's check what maneuver nodes we've got set up. Okay, so this one's here. Um, I'm not sure why, why, why this is here. Let's get rid of this. There we go. And does that now leave us... Ah... Well, who knows what's going on there. It worked last time. There we go. That's perfect. Right. So, having sorted out all the manoeuvre nodes, we're going to point round to face our, face our manoeuvre node and start thrusting. Uh, we may already be a little bit past it as of last time, but we'll soon find out. There we go. Awesome. Right. Back out to our map view. Uh, the manoeuvre node is, um, as always, just a little bit bit useless to us now so I'm gonna get rid of this if I can there we go um, yeah I never really like making the burns with the maneuver nodes still visible because it, it gives you a kind of a false idea of where your ship's actually headed um, I prefer to be able to just watch what I'm doing because you know that that's a hell of a lot easier way of doing it uh, we've already got the DRO there it's about an hour ahead of us on the flight path hopefully if the orbits match up we should have the same sort of uh, separation between our approaches. If we come up here and just get ready to hit that. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Right, I'm going to add a small alarm over here. We want the SOI change. All right, and we're back flying with the DRO just to watch Kerbin disappear. So I can say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure. I will see you next time where we're going to come in for orbit around Juno. We're going to aero break, we're going to stop, and we're going to set up an orbit, and hopefully maybe get a landing out of it. I will see you then. Bye!